Hey, good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm coming in slightly late. Uh, I've had internet challenge here. And, uh, well, I'm gonna have to get a better solution. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Thanks for coming along. Thanks for another time here to pray. Uh, we've been leading ourselves here, uh, doing a study through the book of Daniel. Today we go on to, we're still on to chapter, in chapter two, we're going to uh, verse 20 today. We had verse 19 yesterday. And yesterday we talked about the fact that God is a prayer answering God. He answers our prayer. He delights in answering our prayer, right? But as he answers our prayer, there is something that makes God happy, that makes God joyous, that excites God. As much as God wants to answer our prayer, he also expects a response from us as he answers our prayer. And that's appreciation of what he does, right? Appreciation of what he does appreciation of a person that is shown forth in what he does right that make that makes that 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 makes a difference between night and day to god god does not take that for granted god delights in our appreciating him for who he is and for what he does you know and the first place we see that is is, is a noah right noah after the flood you know, gave an offering to God, gave a thanksgiving offering to God, uh, an offering of worship, an offering, offering of appreciation. And the Bible says that, you know, probably one of the first places that we saw God's emotion, God was moved by Noah's appreciation of his person, right? You know, God has emotions, right? And God is moved when when we do some things, and one of those things that we do that moves God, that excites God, is appreciating his person, appreciating who he is and what he does, appreciating the revelation of God that, that we get, that we have. You know, that makes, that, that, that makes a difference between night and day to God, right? God does not take it for granted, you know, and, and we saw that in Noah, right? Noah gave that offering and God swore because of what Noah did. I mean, it wasn't something God planned before Noah gave the offering. But as God smelt the offering that, that rose up, the incense that rose up to him, he swore to himself, said, never again will I have to destroy man with water. Uh, but let's go ahead and pray. We'll continue after praying. Thanks for praying. You know, we're on to verse 20 of Daniel chapter 2. And it was just Daniel's response to God answering his prayer. Daniel prayed that, that God will give, will reveal to him the dream of a king and also the interpretation. And God answered him, you know. And, and God answered him. And yesterday we focused on the fact that God answers prayers. God loves to answer our prayer. But just as much as God loves to answer our prayer, he also longs that we will appreciate the answer to our prayer. I mean, that makes a, a difference for God. It's not something that's small. God expects that his people will appreciate his person. He will appreciate what he does. And when we don't, it hurts God. It hurts him. When we do, it excites him. It is important to God. He's God, but it's still important to him. That's all we see in scripture. And I was just sharing in the morning that one of the first places we see that is when Noah offered a sacrifice to God. It was, they'd been delivered from the flood. He now gave an offering to God. The Bible said that when God smelt that offering, <laughs> he moved God emotionally. You know, God has emotions and he's moved. It helps us to know the things that move him because God began to swear. And we don't see too many places where God swears. You know, we'll see what with Abraham. When Abraham was willing to give his son, God swore. We saw another one here when Noah gave that offering and God smelled that offering and said, wow. This is the whole reason why I created man. And I would have people that will appreciate my person. 
but why did they make me do this? And he said, never again would this occur. You know, you could almost say God was saying that without thinking because man still, still wanted to say it. But God, but it, met, it meant a lot to God that Noah appreciated him, that he began to say words that he could not go back on. God made promises that he, could, he himself could not go back on. He said, never again will this happen, right? I will never destroy the earth with water. But we know that he's still going to have to destroy it or renew the earth at some point in time. But he can't do it with water because he swore by himself that he wouldn't do it, he wouldn't do it that way again, right? But the key thing that we draw from that is that it was important that Noah appreciated God. Noah could have come out of the house and just business as usual. Yeah? We are saying, we are saying, it's my righteousness. Eh? God is my father, he has done it. He could have done that. And God would have, have not been pleased. But Noah took time to give thanks to God for his deliverance upon his life and that of his family. And that touched God. That means we also need to be careful that we always appreciate and return the glory to God for whatsoever it is. That either we ask or we don't ask. For everything that he does for us, it, God wants us to appreciate it for it. So thanksgiving needs to be uppermost in our life. Whether it's we're giving thanks for the things he has done, whether we're giving thanks for who he is, whether we're giving thanks for the things we're expecting of him. Because, because we know who he is and what he has done before. We can give thanks in appreciation. We can give thanks in anticipation. And that's what we saw in Caleb and Joshua. They had a challenge before them. But because they knew who God was, they, they, all they said was, if, this, if God if is pleased with us, if our relationship is right with him, then what we have in front of us, God will be bread. God will give it to us as bread. It was an expect, expect, ex, expression of their belief, their knowledge, um, their, 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 their conviction about the person of God, you know, and that also moves God. God moves when his people are recognized this person, you know, I can rest in that, you know, but Thanksgiving is, is, is important, you know, gratitude is important. And that saves us also from, from, from depression. You know, a lot of people are struggling with depression, you know, and, and depression will always eat us, you know, only yesterday I got a news that almost could get me depressed, you know, and I started, I had to just be quiet and just let it sink in, you know, like I'll share with you all, my prayer yesterday was God, just help me. He said, it's my helper, so help me, help me in every area of my life. So that's all I was just asking God or believing God for yesterday, that God, even in this area, you're my helper. Help me, help me, help me, you know? It's easy to talk and everybody thinks everything is okay with you. You are dressed well. You know, everybody has. <laughs> but we're all human at the end of the day. We all need help from God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My time is up. Any other thing? Anyone wants to add something to that? Pastor yeah, Shaggy, yeah, you want Thanksgiving is a, is a big thing to God. It's an appreciation of his goodness towards us. Yes. And God... God always, always like that. He, he, he likes it. He likes it. He has expressed it all over in the scripture. A, a, a heart of thanksgiving. I have been in, in a mode of thanksgiving over the uh, property that God gave to us to live in. Because I look at the whole thing and say, it's not possible that you, what has happened is mercy. You have shown mercy to me. I have stood straight. I have not done funny, funny things in the area of money or ministry or money or something like that. It's been, and sometimes it's hard to take the kind of stand because you possibly don't get. You think that people get things and doing things and things like that. You say, no, this is not secure. You're not going to do it. Now, you have to make a proof of it. <laughs> it's okay. What have you gotten in the way you have gone? You know? And uh, for God to come around and say, okay, take this. Take where you're going to leave. For me, the Thanksgiving is beyond. Oh, God, you're mercy, you're mercy. You are good, you're mercy and good forever. And I've seen that God likes that. Absolutely. He likes that. Absolutely. For us to be grateful for what He has done for us. Either in deliverance, in healing, in prosperity, and things He has done. And God is faithful. If you are faithful Absolutely. to Him, He will be faithful to us. Absolutely. It's been like that. So Thanksgiving is, is very, very important. 
this fellow. Yeah. Up to today, I'm still thanking God. It looks like I think it's yesterday that he blessed me with our house. Just, just thanking him, oh God. Yes. Thank you. Tears running down my, my eyes. You mean I'm not going to pay rent again? It's a miracle. It's the only thing can do that for me with the way my finances are. That's <laughs> only thing can do that. And I'm giving thanks and blessing his name. And, you know, it, it's just, again, teaching my family, they say they're doing it and they're doing it. Yes, sir. God is happy with that. I believe he's happy with that. It's a special thing Amen. that we give Absolutely. for healing, for deliverance, for prosperity, for opportunity, for relationship. It's a right for spirit. We need to give thanks unto God. Absolutely. It's a big one. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And it, it, keep, it, keeps, it keeps us young. I mean, Thanksgiving keeps us young. The Bible says, blessed are the broken in spirit. It's that place where you don't feel like, I've, I've grown, I've arrived. <laughs> you know, it keeps you humble, you know, to know that this is where my wisdom comes from. This is where my strength comes from. I am not self-made per se. I'm made by God. <laughs> you know, that's important. Let me allow Beauty. Beauty just celebrated her birthday. I'm sure she has something to say. Auntie Beauty, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to add that sometimes we, we tend to be focused on what we don't have rather than what we have. Even somebody was mentioning it this morning that uh, uh, the oxygen that we breathing we don't pay for it and we just take it for granted we as uh, people are paying for that in the hospital so more of what we do is we look at uh, we are preoccupied with what we don't have what we don't have and what is not available and we just get tired and get discouraged and everything so uh, in line with giving thanks, we must name them one by one. As the hymn writer said, count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you. Actually, it will surprise you <laughs> what the Lord has done. So that is what I have resolved to do, to focus on what I have. Uh, give thanks for what he has already made that very praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's important, you know. But, you know, the things that we don't have are loud. They are bold. They, 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 they hit at us. The things that we have are shy. They hide their way, you know. So we have to make the effort to look at them, you know. And, and there's a principle in life. What you focus on, you're going to have more of it. If you are focusing on the things you don't have, you'll have more of what you don't have. You focus on the things that you have, you'll have more of the things you have. You know, whatever you focus on, that's what you're going to get. So the enemy knows that. So the enemy wants us to focus on what we don't have, because that's then going to depress us. It will give us heaviness. It will, it will, it will paint God black. It will, it will take. It will fight against our hope. It will fight against our faith. Therefore, then we'll have more of sadness in our life. But if we focus on the things that we have. You know, that will enlarge us, it will enlarge our horizon, you know, and then we can believe God for more things, you know, as we're grateful for what we have, God who is excited about our gratitude will open more doors for us, you know. It has to be intentional. You are not gonna you're not gonna get to the place where you feel like doing it, or if you feel like it'll be temporal, right? So you have to do it when you don't feel like because that's the only way that's gonna break, you're gonna break through, go beyond the darkness, you know. And, uh, and it's just reality. We are always going to be in a position where we don't have, right? Mm. We're going to have some things and we're not going to have some things. It's a gift. Mm. That's part of being human. The day you have everything that you ever want, you're about to die, <laughs> right? Because that means you are, you are done here, you know? But there has to be something we're always pressing towards, something that wakes us up every morning, something that we're pursuing, something we're going after, right? That's just the way this universe is created right you know but it has to come from a place of contentment right bible says godliness with contentment is great gain right contentment okay. is what helps us to be glad to be grateful it solidifies us where we are and gives us strength to go and fight the battle of life but you know when i'm not content then i'm already weak i don't have a defense i don't have a wall around my city i'm hoping to the devil you know the devil's attack and god cannot defend me 
because of the principle that God himself has set, you know. May God help us and give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me let you go. <laughs> Have a great evening of the afternoon. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Good, really. Thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah. man.